everybody to this best of three upper bracket match. Falcons versus Bedfoom. Suns fan here with Cinderin. <laughs> Give him the horns, Cinderin. Oh, it's too late. We're Rock off camera. On. Rock on, bro. And we have that would have been really nice if you were wearing the jacket. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm feeling some of the the remnants of it, if you will. Uh, yeah, we're gonna see a support Terra Blade again. It's been doing decently at times. It does seem like a decent game against the DK eventually with the You're reflection. And I mean, honestly, even Sunder, if you look at it, they do have four strength heroes. Uh, I'm not yep. sure how easy it is for Crit to be able to get it off in a team fight, but there is that potential. What do you think? We were casting a game, was it yesterday that there was a Terrorblade support, support plus Sven, or were we just, I don't, actually, never mind, we weren't casting, we were just watching that one, but I, I was like, this Sunder on the Sven is not particularly helpful, because once he's used all his stuff, getting the life back doesn't really help, like, you use your Zetanic and, and you've used everything, I think it's way better with a carry like Luna, who can keep standing her ground, maybe she can get off the Glaives a second time uh, with her Shard. And stabilize. So I think that's that's definitely an upside here for Falcons. Is the type of carry that they're playing the Terrorblade with. Save. Big yep. damage. He's in a bit of trouble, and he's gonna get disemboweled from the first blood as Malreen will take it. The Falcons already on the board, and I think you can ask anyone in the green room around the world potentially. Cinderin, Falcons are the favored ones in this series for yeah. sure. Bet boom. They've had a lot of cracks at Falcons. And they've not come out on top. They have taken some games in from the past tournaments and earlier in this tournament as well. But the thing that I look for is when you lose, you do learn more than when you mm -hmm. win. So can they use that information to take this series? I kind of like Betboom's draft a little bit more, to be honest, uh, against what Falcons have here. I don't think Luna's matchups in this game are particularly good into the Dragon Knight and the Lifestealer. That's going to be the boat as well. And I worry that Falcons won't have enough damage to actually break the fight open. These are some tanky frontline boys with the ghost ship, let me tell you. They're very difficult to kill. Um, and the laning stage, as the panel talked about as well, should be quite good for the safe lane. The Undying Lifestealer against an off lane Mars plus Terror Blade should be quite easy. Uh, this mid lane on paper, I think, is maybe even slightly DK favored as well. So that one is good. It's a lot of... And you know, Bet Boom is a heavy laning team. They're exceptionally good in lanes. They build a lot of their advantages early on. Yep. And they have the recipe for it this game. I think all three of their lanes could go well. Having said that, uh, we've said that before. <laughs> yep. Against Falcons, and it doesn't seem to matter. I think Jenkins is the one that was bringing it up. Like Amar, sometimes, it's, I mean, they pick his hero early, so of course it's going to get countered. And then even if it's countered, he still comes out on top of the laning stage and just befuddling everyone in the process. So He is the best player this matchup. tournament at playing bad matchups. I'll, I will say that. That's... We've had some mid players have some quite good games as well when they're counterpicked, but to me, Amar is just outstanding in his ability to min max in lanes where others would just kind of crumble. He can, it's not necessarily that he wins them hard, but just drawing, right? If you draw a lane that you're supposed to lose, it's a major win, relatively speaking. That's yeah. always what's going to be the, the concept that they're looking for. So far, so good for him. Five and three against the eight and three on Lifestealer. And with the pulls from Crit, they've effectively move this lane around enough that Amar can get a little bit of a foothold. Bottom lane, Lucent Beam's gonna slow down the attacks a bit, but save just finds the range to take out Snake King. Yeah, and Maiden is very vulnerable in this lane. Luna does not offer much protection against the double stun from Lion into Torrent combo. Oh yeah, look at that reflection. Juicy stuff. Are you a fan of the, the support TB that we've been seeing? As in... Would I like Just to play generally. it myself and think it's fun, or do I think it's good? Uh, it's up to you, Cinder. You don't need to ask. I think it's quite good. Am I a fan of this hero being a support? I mean, it's fun for the game when heroes can flex, but it also it feels a little bit weird at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's a little right? filthy, it's isn't a, it? It's a little off yeah. somehow, but, you know. If it works, it works. Teams are playing to win. They're not playing to have fun. But Maybe they they're also have playing fun to have in the fun. process, yeah, I think. It, they generally go hand in hand. Toronto Tokyo puts down the tombstone, trying to force Falcons back a little further. Blood grenade onto both as Amar needs to use the rebuke to get some distance. And Nightfall can be getting all these last hits, all these potential denies. Radiance Actually misses a couple last attack. hits to harass here onto crit. But you know, so far, Amar 
despite being pressured, doing okay. Could 17 be and 5. That's yeah. great. It's really the mid lane that's surprising. 24 and 6 for the DK, 17 and 1 for Malreen on the Pango. Do Tombstone zombies count? As CS? Yeah. I actually don't know this. Huh. Because they are like worth nothing, but it's still you're killing a unit. So if that counts, this might be, you know, warped a little bit. Well, do wards count as last hits? Yes. Okay, then they should. It's a gadget. As snaking is <laughs> kind of torn to down. Well, what? It's a gadget. A ward is like a category in the game. <laughs> yeah. Who are you telling a zombie is a gadget? It's a gadget <laughs> that just has arms. Don't mistake it. So you go to like or Home Depot game. to buy a zombie is what you're saying. I mean, I, have you seen the people in <laughs> Home Depot? It's probably where the zombie apocalypse will begin. Between that and Walmart. You can't sure. buy the employees, Shannon. That's not how it works. Well. Or the clientele, for that matter. Also not for sale. Surprised you've even been. Although to I Home guess Depot every, everything that has a. I mean, I had to think about it for a little bit. I've never been. <laughs> oh, look at the fortification coming out, and the dragon tail. More denies for GPK. Just being a very annoying presence in lane. Thirty-two and nine right now for GPK. Just having himself a terrific start to the game. He's going to hit six here relatively soon. This is one of the Some worst starts we've seen from Malreen. And he even had first blood in the rune. Imagine if he didn't have that. Yeah, true. This could have been even worse. So that's a very good sign for Bet Boom that GPK is doing well in lane here. And obviously, something that's always a problem when you're playing against Dragon Knight mid is rotations always come at a cost. So Malreen on this pango has been very happy to rotate around and find kills in side lanes. Actually, he might just be the recipient here. Yep, and Pale from Save, who makes his way over Toronto. Tokyo from the other side as well, and a Decay finishes the job. Very good timing, Con connecting right as GPK hits the six. And what I was going to say is if pango starts rotating to the side lanes, well, guess what? Dragonite is going to be pushing your tower. So Indeed. you can't really just let up control in mid entirely. Crit will see Toronto, Tokyo, and Toronto, Tokyo will see Crit. And they don't none care. Of, neither of them cares. Radiance That's correct. Crit right. came for the one reflection onto GPK and is now going to try to contest the rune. Toronto Tokyo takes it though, so at the very least they do deny it onto the DK. From the Falcons' perspective, that is. One more thing about this game. This is a very uncharacteristic crit hero. I think. That's something we need to pay attention to as well. For the way Falcons operate and the way the games generally work, Crit has quite a significant playmaking role. The panel was talking about this pre-game, that a lot of the time Crit is the one who breaks the lanes wide open. You generally don't do that on Terrorblade. Well, gonna have a bit of a clash here. Toronto Tokyo came to gank along with Crit. Tombstone is placed. Big Decay to follow. Impale onto Skeeter. Should be able to run away, though, as Crit's meta forcing them back a bit. Snaking with one more Frostbite for the road. Actually pops his Lotus as well. Now Miero in a bit of trouble. Into the trees he goes, but Crit, <laughs> he's going to heal up dramatically as well. Don't think this is going to lead to a kill either way. It always looks funny when Terrorblade uses Wand. Just heals like 40% of his health. Oh, he's actually going for the 7-minute Wisdom. He's yeah, this is out, really... TP. He's not going to make it. Miero has to TP. And now he's going to die too. Crit. Will fall as a result of this. Good attempt, though. Okay, one more reflection for the road. The Falcons will be able to get their Radiant wisdom rune. Scanning. So it'll just be a trade as it is meant to be, of course. Because... Oh, what's this button? <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, just play around with that. They defended good. their rune. They get a little fanfare. Uh, can we get production? Can we get another soundboard above the bet boom button that is just a screeching falcon? Yeah, I was just going to say. That would be a perfect way to cast this game. I would appreciate that. Take your time choosing a, a good selection. I'm sure How about that. you do your best attempt at a falcon sound? Oh, that's going to be, that's going to bleed some ears, as they say. I, I'm ready. <clears throat> Maybe I'll wait for the right moment then. Okay. I can't wait for you to incorporate that in a team fight. <laughs> I'll do it when you least expect it, when they lose a, a fight. <laughs> That's when it's funniest. That's the dying cool. falcon. Pretty even game right now. Um, across the board, Lifesteal are doing surprisingly not better than this. He's tied with Amar in this lane, 47 and 7 against the 47 and 13. But at the same time, can we really be surprised at this point, right? Like. Yep. It it just happens. It it's just seems to happen every time. It's expected at this point, which is pretty ridiculous. Frostbite 
With the TP from Malreen, ult to follow. Miero gets his boat off. That'll keep him alive a little bit longer. Toronto Tokyo trying to get the Luna in the meantime, but the wraparound from Malreen connects again. And now Toronto Tokyo on the run. Gonna continue to get blocked. There's a shield crash slow. More blocks to come. Loosen and beam reflection. And an eventual cleanup as Malreen secures the double kill. Yeah. Nice rotations. It's gonna cost him a bit in mid. We'll see who TP's over to try to defend this tower against GPK, but it's a very successful move, getting the two kills for none. And at, in one way, maybe you should just let this tower fall and just be like, you know, it's inevitable. As long as you make good moves and bring other heroes into the game, it's probably worth it. Uh, at the very least, I definitely don't think Pango should be pinned down in mid. Somebody else has to pick up the slack and defend that tower. It's not really his job, and Crit will do it for now on the TV. That's a really fast blink dagger. That's a nine and a half minute blink for GPK. And he probably will have to wait for the next dragon form, though. It's a little bit of an awkward timing, potentially. He's going to go straight for the Manta next. I mean, you can still, you can still gank without dragon form, obviously. It's a, it's a DPS loss, but... At the very least, he has lions. Who Seven minutes and 45 seconds faster than the average, but that's mainly because you typically won't see that first pick. Yeah. Ten minute rune about to spawn. It'll be bottom in Viz. And Miero looks to be getting that just barely. Yep. Nice grab. Still 2k lead from Falcons. Just raw net worth here. Actually, quite the significant Down amount, given that this is a three to four kill game. But a large amount of it is sitting on that Luna just having better farming potential, but also the two supports, each ahead by about 500. Starting to scale a little bit more. Now the thing about Terrorblade support is, I had this discussion with Mira backstage about Terrorblade 4 versus Terrorblade 5 and what you itemize. I will have to wait for that. Well, that thought, Swash comes in only on to save, so Toronto Tokyo trying to run away, but the Frostbite keeps him in place, and now he's gonna get Frostbit again. There's a swat. Oh. He could should be able to clean this. him up eventually. Okay, Tombstone well. was placed, so that's going to provide some extra gold for Malreen and company. They'll be very thankful to Toronto Tokyo for that. I feel like Undying's do this too much. It's just a yeah, I would agree. It's just a bad habit. Like, don't drop the Tombstone if you have no teammates coming over. It's going to make zero difference. You're just Maybe giving he away thought gold. Thought he had teammates coming, Cinderin. You ever oh. think about that? Yeah, I, I do, but they never show up. Well, there's an Undying after all. I mean, this is. Toronto Tokyo we're talking about. Mm. He's used to having people TP for him from the mid lane. Dyer's it's muscle memory. <laughs> like surely someone's gonna help pour on dying out. Then he forgets that he's position five. Then he ends up with he still a ridiculous amount of farm. Probably routinely forgets that, yeah. This is uh, hard to break that habit. This is a quite good timing on the Pango Diffusal, given how the lane started. Malreen five and one, and crit next to him, almost completing the drum. So what I was getting at with the itemization is we were talking backstage about Terrorblade 4 versus Terrorblade 5 and what you itemize, and kind of came to the conclusion that the first two items you get are the same. And then the problem Terrorblade 4 runs into is, I think compared to the 5, if you're distributing the gold within your team, what's the next item you can buy on a TB that is going to be great to have on a 4 more so than a 5? Because usually they go drums or vessel, and then boots of bearing, right? That's been what we've seen. seen most of the times from these four and five TBs. And after that, I feel like if you're playing it as a support, you'd almost rather have the, ne have the net worth on another hero that can use the utility better. Either somebody who spell casts. better or somebody who carries auras better or whatever um so by putting it on four i think that's a, one of the issues that's a little bit awkward yeah. so i'm curious to see if this game goes late enough what crit's going to do because you're like realistically speaking Are you really going to transition into a core if it's not like a 60 plus minute game? You're not going to get that well, that's the Yasha question. start farming, so. I mean, we have seen that, of course. 
has not been that successful, though, I think. Drums is definitely a good start for him. As Blade Mail now picked up by Miero. Let's see if Beppu can finally use this Blink Dagger again. Like, it's been four Dyer, minutes since Australia. GPK has had it. They haven't really had the opportunity to do anything, though. Yep. As, ooh, the stack Radiance is being is taken by Skeeter. They need GPK. Gonna start out with the Impale, surely. There it uh, is. Oh, they overlapped. Yep, the Tombstone now placed. And look at all the TP rotations from Falcons as they come to play. Save Super Dead. And Toronto Tokyo is gonna be next. Can Malreen find another? The two supports are gonna easily get stripped of their lives. Although they will be traded for the other two supports as Gonna see the arena come out as GPK is infested currently. The DK will die. The spear actually did connect on the nightfall, it looks like. And that turns into a triple kill for Amar. So four dead for Beppin, where they felt like they had the upper hand, but just absolutely punished. Honestly, this initiation, it's kind of mind-boggling to me. They're being, look how patient they are. And then they somehow stack their stuns. Like, they had 10 seconds to plan this, and then they stack Dragon Tail and Earth Spike. And because they stack them, they hesitate to commit on the Luna Kill. Crit comes in, gets the Sunder. He will be traded, obviously, here by Save, who can just finger the TB instead. But this was not the kill that you were going here for. This needs to be better coordinated at this level. The Dragon Tail or the Earth Spike needs to start. You just full on burst him with everything you have before the TB can react. Put down the Tombstone and everything. Instead, they end up in this awkward limbo where it's too easy for Falcons. And keep in mind, the best okay. team fight here on the Dire isn't even there as part of the move. Like, Miero is bottom, and I think it makes sense for him to not be a part of the smoke because it makes it too obvious. They have to show someone to not make the counterplay too easy for Falcons. But yeah, I messing up the spells is... They force out his rage, and now snaking. Oh, the Yules is going to set some stuff up. Nightfall in a lot of trouble. Even the Eclipse coming out from Skeeter. And this is officially out of control. Falcons ah! are destroying <laughs> right now. <laughs> Was yep. that to your satisfaction? I can't, dude. <laughs> I actually don't know what a falcon sounds like. I'm pretty sure it's, that's probably more of a hawk. Okay, I really hope family. they're going to clip that sound and actually make that the button. <laughs> so I can just invoke your screech whenever I want it. But Cinder in this, I mean, we're 15 and a half minutes in. Falcons. They are 6K. crushing them. This is, I mean, Beppu, when they're typically behind, they just oh, end up losing a lot of the time. Yeah. Which is actually normal for most teams. Yeah, but it's the way in which they lose. I think a lot of the games we've seen from Beppu where the early game doesn't go well, they just default to farming and then they just lose. Like, they don't try to fight their way back a lot, which is something we saw from Falcons that I was very impressed by in the second group stage. They had a game that looked terrible and they just started making a lot of moves. It was pretty clear that the communication was, all right, guys, this isn't looking too good. We have to take some risks and keep finding fights around what our heroes can do. I think in this game, if you're bet boom and you just default to farming, I don't think that's how you win this. Like, you need to use your undying when he's strong. You need to use the tombstone when it matters. Save, tank in the gank, goodbye. Oh, very dead. Yeah, I, I just hope we don't see bet boom fall into that pit of nothingness where they just farm it out until it's over. Use your Kunkka, use your Undying, and then maybe it's fine to farm and wait for a key item, as long as it, it's not just this one item takes the next, takes the next kind of thing, and you, you never accomplish okay, it. Okay, what is the key item? I think Lifestealer Radiance is, okay. is absolutely go time. If you're gonna not fight with that, I think you're just giving up the entire map. So. Yeah, I mean, they have, we talked about the Blink Dagger on GPK already, but the Blade Mail from Mir, this is a fighting item. Yep, they both bought fighting sense. items, but they haven't fought together yet. Yeah. So they haven't really got any value out of this net worth. And on the flip side, Falcons are just buying these hybrid items and just keep farming. The Dragon Knight could have been a lot richer had he bought another item than this dagger and not really put it to much use. These key moments make a really big difference. Of course, Falcons have really been on the ball with responding. I like the smoke of, you know, getting something done. Malreen would be a very nice pickup. Boat's coming for him. Will be the death of the Pango. That's a start for Bet Boom. It's going to need to get some more going their way. But you can see Falcons have split the map. Back to farming they go. And when it comes to the inevitable Roche time, I know we're a little early here, Cinderin, mm -hmm. but do you give, like, outside of the net worth discrepancy, do you give one team a favorable attack. fight in that scenario? Because there's two like there's two types of things you look at with Roche, is how fast can you take Roche, but how good can you fight 
in that area as well. I think both teams are quite bad at taking it, but really good at fighting there. So. Oh, Spear actually misses Rare from miss. Lamar. He's going to get x back. Is there going to be any TP support? Doesn't look like it. Miero will walk it off. He could have got a guaranteed setup there by blink yuling into Spear, but I think the logic for Amar here is this play needs to be fast. So if you start with Yules, you give the enemy team two and a half seconds to TP in, and it's just too long. So he has to go for it this way. I think he could have maybe blink speared and then arena instead of vice versa. Um, but either way, or did, he did arena first, right? Or did he spear first, miss it, and then just instantly arena? I actually think he did blink spear, just missed it. And he's so, he's so confident that he's going to land it that he immediately just changed the other spell. That's probably what happened. It's ra relatively inconsequential, though. Just going to keep farming and pushing out. Bet boom, don't really seem to be interested in trying to take advantage of the arena being down. Yep, they have ball. enough problems with the waves. He's got the sacred relic. And you know, not too far off from the talisman of evasion. So the radius will be there in the next minute or so. Less than that, even. Let's see if Bepum group up and try to try to find a fight. As this would also line up with that mech that Toronto Tokyo picked up. But Malreen has his Ags already. Only level 13, though. And now a blink on to save. So, see how they want to defend this. Toronto Tokyo putting down the Tombstone very early. Oh, it's very defensive, but it's better to get it off than just getting caught and dying. He had a feeling they were coming for him, so he's just going to immediately drop it in case a fight breaks out. And now that it doesn't... He looks like a fool, but I think that was a very nice quick reaction from him at the very least. Save. Yeah. Getting hounded by Amar. Oh, that was not good movement. Wash is there. Goodbye. Another freebie for Falcons. As we can see, Betboom... I thought they were going to group up here, but I guess they just wait for this Torrent Storm. It's only 100 gold away. Yeah, Torrent Storm Radiance and then Radiance fight before Luna gets too big because she will inevitably outfarm everyone in this game. She has the whole map. She's on the winning team. She had a good lane. And she just inherently farms faster than Lifestealer. So Skidder will eventually be a full item ahead. Currently 3,000 up on Nightfall, which is a lot. 20 minutes in. Yeah, the fighting potential should be there now for Bet Boom. I'm are gonna buy the Aetherlands, Jenkins and Shambles. Yeah, what is that all about? It just gives you way more I'm not oh, gonna thinking. Oof. Yeah, so it gives you way more reach for the Yule. Um it gives you more cast range on the arena. So I just it makes your initiation options way cleaner to play. Okay, so why sometimes he does not pick it up? That's a good question for him. I I don't know what the exact mindset is behind buying this item over other items, like when he does and when he doesn't do it. But you can rest assured there's a very good reason. Um, All right, GP. Oh my goodness, that blink from Amar. Wow. That is... Yeah. Surely he didn't actually... Is that just instinct? He didn't see anything. It's the hidden power of the Aetherlands. <laughs> it comes with a radar. I see. Yeah, that's very strong indeed. It does need a buff. I mean, you still can't upgrade that to anything, right? Unless I miss something. I don't think so. As, oh, oh yeah, the, you, obviously, yeah, e blade, but you're not buying that. On Mars. Oh yeah, that's so, true. There's no like meaningful build path on on Mars for this. Oh, uh, you didn't mention. I thought you were on uh, on light collector duty, Cinderin. Oh, who bought it? Who got it? Who got Snake it? King. Snake King got light collector. Good job. It's, it's very good. Off. The best new item in the game right now. Apparently. And with that, Snake King's move speed on Crystal Maiden is now 400. <laughs> it's quite fast for a CM. That's the slowest Frank. hero, one of the slowest heroes in the game. Tranquils and that will give you 401. You pop drums, it's nighttime, then you're you're closing in on 500. Yeah, you might as well be Bloodseeker at that point. Amar, Yule's initiation, but the torrent is going to hit him. Gets the spear into the arena, rolling thunder from Malrain. As looks like they're going to focus on this Konka. Eclipse coming in as well. Freezing Field in addition. Toronto Tokyo, though, is the first to fall. Miero gets infested. Swashbuckle the follows. Malreen kind of left on a low, but they find Skeeter instead. The burst is there to kill him off. And now Amar in a lot of trouble as Nightfall with that ghoul frenzy chases him down. Two for one to start as Crit will have to try to fight his way, but 
He is surrounded and he is a support Terrorblade after all. Three for one as Bedboom come out on top, so not able to burst down Miero fast enough. They finally found a team fight and it was brought to them, but they keep Miero alive really long, nice and fast, and eventually the whole team connects and they get the counterplay. The tombstone was up very long this time, so this was the type of fight I was looking for for Betboom. I thought perhaps they would be able to force it themselves, but if Falcon brings it to you, even better. Like, then it's just easy to connect your heroes over, get that counterplay. And of course, take advantage of the fact that Falcon's burst isn't really the best, right? Like, this is something you're sacrificing when you go for Terrorblade as your position four. This hero does not deal very much damage as a four, I would say. Like, you can pop meta, you can get a couple of attacks in, but it's not like, let's say, Lion, right? It's just going to instantly dump 600 magic damage on, your, on their target. Um, and it gives Betboom the time to respond here and, and find a major counterplay. And all of a sudden, this game is now wide open. 8k down to 3. Start closing in on some more meaningful items here. Dragon Knight almost has the Axe. Lifestealer's closing in on Sanjan Yasha. The Undying will have Greaves, which is quite the big item here too. So a lot of things coming Betboom's way soon. Yep, only a 2k lead, so Falcons with a bit of a misstep. Perhaps too much confidence, considering that they were winning that laning stage handily. But now kind of brought down back to Earth. As Roche will eventually be taken by Skeeter and company. So Aegis for the Luna. This is a strong timing for Falcons, despite losing that fight. Aegis, Luna with BKB. You just got the Pango Dagger. And looks like they want to put it to use immediately on this bottom tier too. But boom, want to fight though. They're going to TP back their heroes. This is perhaps for Falcons an unexpected defense. We'll see if they're positioned properly for it. They're not full committing. And yeah, they're backing away a bit, Miero. His smoke will pop. Crit going to spot him. As the X comes in, GPK with the Dragon Tail. And Thunder not available because he is still stunned. Amar gets off an arena onto basically everybody from Betboom. But where is the Skeeter damage? Valreen with the rolling thunder as Skeeter tries to run away. Gets Dragon Tail. That's life number one. And Fest takes him out. I mean, and now they're going to completely surround him. What Skeeter's in a lot of trouble. Do here? Yeah. And Pale wouldn't even be able to get off the BKB anyway, it seems, as Skeeter does get destroyed. And Betboom. Coming out on top in the second fight in a row. I think this is the kind of fight where you have to pop BKB on your first life and the teammates have to connect. And if that's not happening, I guess they, I mean, you see, they're using the arena. Skitter's kind of going, he's just going in, but not popping BKB. And you're using your arena and uh, Rolling Thunder this time, keep in mind. So a lot of the time it's better to save your BKB for your second life on the carry because you can force enemy spells. But in this kind of situation, you used your entire team's kit, which is when you get to do the damage. So if you don't pop BKB during that, I think your second life is just worthless. So that was very, very easy for Bet Boom there. All right. So now the game is for the first time, the whole game. I think Bet Boom have a gold lead. Yeah, I think so. Uh, production yep. has just told me, everybody, very important announcement that we do have a Falcon sound. Let's see what it sounds like. Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does sound like that was me, actually. <laughs> that is definitely you. All right, good. Oh, I love that. that. Yeah, they're gonna need some. Uh, they're gonna need a morale boost here. So <laughs> I think. Imagine, imagine Falcons go to land and the audience cheer for them with that sound. <laughs> that would be so obnoxious. I love it. Let's bring that to the next land for sure. And you can see Falcons. Making their way towards the bottom. I'm going to take the gate to try to connect here. Yeah, looking for there's no Aegis, opening there's, on Nightfall, maybe. There's no Roche, Radiant nothing like that. Scanning. He's just not an easy target. Yeah, he's opting for the BKB yeah, next. Now Falcons don't have right. Falcons That's don't have an bomb. instant stun, right? They have a blink spear, but if you're fast on life steal, you're going to get off that rage. Yeah. It's oh, the blink in. No Dragon Tail, though. Nice Yules from Amar. As GPK is going to focus everything onto Skeeter. Boat's coming. Good Sunder from Crit, keeping Skeeter alive. He'll pop the BKB in retreat. The arenas have been on point for Amar, but they just don't have the damage, it seems like, as Bet Boom looks like they want to fight. Rolling Thunder from Malreen, using the roll up to keep the Toronto Tokyo Undying stun locked. GPK going to focus on snaking. Meanwhile, Nightfall coming in for a little right click action. 
Yeah, Toronto Tonga didn't even die. The DM there. Eclipse to follow for Skeeter as he tries to dodge out the Torrent Storm, but there's the finger, there's the burst. Again, Skeeter will die. And now Amar gets clipped by the Torrent. Dragon Tail will be his inevitable doom. Three for nothing as Bet Boom are getting everything that they want. Now Nightfall has enough to finish his BKB as well, so it'll be that much harder to contain him. Yeah, that really feels like it's the name of the game here is can Falcons find the damage? I think that's kind of the... See, first of all, you look at the total damage numbers of 4,000 advantage for the Dire, but it's also about where does the damage go, right? It's nice that Luna deals 4.2k, but if it's split across three cores with both on them and one of them has lifesteal, it's not... It's not translating into any meaningful kills or anything. You're not finding the supports. Bet Boom, I guess you found the Undying, but he didn't even die with his Greaves. Super tanky Greaves double Wraith Band Buckler. He has 26 armor on the Undying. That's a big boy. He is a very big boy. This item will help from crit. He's finally getting a Vlad's. So it's something, but I can't help but feel like the, this Terrorblade support has almost run its course by now. At this point, he's kind of... It was a good Sunder. It was a good Sunder, definitely. It was necessary for that fight to even be remotely playable for Falcons, but... It does feel like... In He's done more damage than the Luna, actually, with Reflection. That is okay. Okay. It's quite surprising. I mean, <laughs> that is a lot. Good, there are some good targets. Do you feel like Falcons, for the first time in this game, throughout like, all our coverage of them in this tournament, feels like they are a bit hesitant at times. Like, they can't make up their mind what they want to do. I feel like it's cost them a couple fights now. I think it's by uh, by draft design for Bet Boom though. That's it is just difficult. I think a lot of Falcons games has been super clear cut how they initiate fights. They haven't been playing against Dragon Knight very much. They've been picking that themselves uh, as the overall first pick of the draft. But Bet Boom came in with that prep. Snaking's dead here to GPK. Yeah, it, it's. I don't. I don't blame them for struggling. I think strategically, this is a very difficult game to initiate in. You only catch is blink spear, but who do you blink spear among Kunkka, Mar? Uh, sorry, Kunkka, Dragon Knight, and Life Stealer. Like, your targets just aren't appealing. And if you make any mistake, that's the other thing. When you come in with a Mar, you're not necessarily getting back out again, so you better make a count. Nice oh, the tombstone. trees wow. were taken out by the tombstone, which means the spear does not connect. Now Amar using his arena to try to retreat, but that is not happening. That was gorgeous. <laughs> My goodness. The timing on that. That's disgusting. Out Toronto, Tokyo. 8K lead for Bet Boom. Now they have flipped this upside down. And now they try to go high ground. Yep, they know there's no arena. They feel like they can just disengage if Falcons initiate on them. It's going to be very difficult for the, for the Falcon side to the type of fight they want. Yep. But they'll try. Skinner isn't even here. They're using the Rolling Thunder to delay. Rolling Thunder. Miero has to use his BKB. And it looks like Bet Boom are going to be forced out. So Delay tactics successful. Ends up being, yeah, a good choice for Skeeter to just chill and farm away. But Miero can reset. I really like this from Save, by the way. While this mid fight was happening, he TP top. He was looking for Luna out in the top jungle, assuming that they, the Luna was going to be fighting, uh, farming up here in the Mighty Mines, and they went for an infest play with Life Stealer. Unfortunately for them, Skidder was bottom, so he dodged a bullet there, but that was a, a play that would not have been particularly easy for Skidder to read. He's just uh, happy to be on the right side of the map. That was a beautiful well. We do, I do love a well. So there's the Mighty Mines, there's the well, right? I forgot what it's called. I think it's called the well, isn't it? But what's the buff called? We need the creeps to spawn so we can oh, see it. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that, that's too far. The mighty well. Oh, maybe. more important things are happening here as Crick gets caught off guard. And you can see Amar gets bursted to a pulp. Still has a little bit of HP left, but we'll have to use the Yules in defeat as he will drop easily. Snaking gets axed back from his TP. Nothing. And just a really casual three kills for Bed Boom. Not breaking a sweat at all. Oh, yeah. It's called Well Wishes, Shannon. Well Wishes. Of course it's a pun. Tier 3 taken by Bet Boom. This will be a set of racks. They, they don't have the Tier 2 bottom. They do have the one top, so they could go for the second racks in that lane. Yeah, Fal Falcons have just run out of steam. It's really fascinating to watch a game like this where they're doing everything right. They take one bad fight and they just hit a wall. Yeah. Like after that, they've not been able to do anything. The items have just been too overpowering. The, t the heroes are too tanky on the side of Bet Boom. And they're just going to keep rolling. And Falcons. We're proposing a solution to this Lifestealer with the Luna, but unfortunately, Lifestealer cannot lose. 
Apparently. So... Why do you think this hero is so strong? Because you were bringing it up backstage that basically at the beginning of this tournament, this hero was not picked, basically. Yeah, teams right? were not playing this for the first week. And then all of a sudden, it is starting to become more and more beloved in the second phase and just winning the vast majority of its games. I think going into this game, it was 15 and 6, which is very, very high for a carry that is not even a cheese pick or overall last picked in the draft. Most of these lifestealer picks are picked like third, fourth, and teams are struggling to find solutions to it. I can't tell you exactly what the problem is. Like, maybe the... You know, it's like multiple buffs happening at the same time. The hero gets a bit stronger, Radiance gets a bit stronger, other carries got nerfed. He's inherently, in the meta and the way the game is played right now, having a carry that has innate BKB is incredible. He's very hard to kill when he's farming the map. That was Skeeter's butterfly, by the way. So, not able to get it off the Courier. Courier's They're dead. They're gonna try. Nice That's spear, good. nice eclipse. That is more than enough. Nightfall oh, bursted, 80 seconds. No way to get back. Bed Boom likely will just have to retreat and delay, delay, delay. So they're gonna find Toronto Tokyo, gets off the Greaves, save is there as well with a nice impale onto three heroes. Might as well have been a ravage. Dragon Tail to follow from GPK, Sunder onto Skeeter, but the damage is too much from Bed Boom. Double kill for GPK, and Crit and company looks like they are all gonna fall other than Amar as Falcons oh! lose the fight to Bed Boom. <laughs> Wow, that, what an S tier play call. I actually am quite shocked that Bet Boom were able to pull that off. So they lose their, they lose their life stealer. And I don't know, they were all tipping Nightfall after that. I don't know if he said, you guys can still win this fight, just do this or that. But somehow they find a four for one trade after their carry dies. They get this amazing spell combo from Yero there on the high ground and kind of just pile on them with the tombstone, with the flesh golem, Dragon Knight coming in. Ultimately, Falcons kind of run into the same problem even when the enemy carry is dead. Like, okay, what's next? Where's the damage then? Yeah. They had to use everything to kill Skeeter. They went for the Blink Mars into Arena. Uh, so they don't have the Arena for the follow-up fight to contain them. And they use the Pangold as well. So two of their very big team fight abilities down the drain has Bet Boom confident they can take that one fight while being outnumbered. And they were very right. Now Amar's in trouble. Yes, Caught by is. the X mark. Act, but the Yules will counteract it a bit. Nightfall's coming with that rage. He's hungry, hungry for some more action. But X. Uh, the X comes into play again. And it's just a matter of time. Amar dies. As the Boots of Bearing finished by Crypt. Always a classic item for a Terrorblade. <laughs> ah, yes. Vintage. So here, here's the thing, Senator. I'm not saying that there's no use of a Terror Blade as support. Mm -hmm. I just wonder in like most of these games, I feel like it's mostly just a draft thing to try to throw off the opponent. Like you're giving up a lot in a support, right? It's, Would you agree with that? I think part of the hero's strength is being a flex. I can't believe I'm saying that, but that's the state of affairs right now. You pick it early in the draft, the enemy team has to constantly be on their toes. Okay, we can't make it too good of a core Terrorblade game because then he's going to run us over with the farm. Yeah. And if we do counterpick him too much, they can put it support and counter our course. So obviously that's part of the, the rationale here. I wouldn't. I also think he's a quite good laner depending on matchup. You saw in this game they still managed to do fine top, but they didn't win, right? And I don't know, there's... Do you know what I mean when I say I feel like it's wasted to put crit on this hero? I just, yes. I think if you're gonna play this, sure. put it on snaking, because the way your team dynamic works, you're better off giving crit a playmaking four and then using the Terrorblade. If you want this decoy pick or whatever you want to call it, yeah. that's fine, but... I mean, if he got Ags, then maybe it would be a bit of a different Terrorblade type. Game. You blink Ags, <laughs> yeah. it's like 7,000 gold. Yep, exactly. <laughs> to to do a little bit that. of a fear and set up the fight. I mean, sure, but yeah. You want a playmaker, that is a playmaker. It just takes forever. But yeah, no, I, I totally agree. But it is interesting that they're using this as kind of a resource to, like, in. I know it's not maybe the best analogy, but when you pick a Terrorblade support, surely other supports would probably do a better job throughout the game. But because you're forcing them to make certain picks, it might just be worth it yes. in the end. Yeah. It's an interesting uh, thought process for sure. Oh, they found okay, Skeeter! The burst! Skeeter, are you dead? It's close. Gets off the BKB, trying to run away from the Ghoul Frenzy as Nightfall will continue. But the Moonglaives end up saving him. That shard, definitely very good as Malreen 
Rolling Thunder is going to be ending here pretty soon, and likely this game number one. That's Thunder and BKB on the Luna. She can't fight. Oh, now. the spear is going to be dodged. Nightfall with the quick rage takes out Snaking, who buys back. Amara is next. He has no buyback, though. And now GPK and company focusing on the buildings. Fortification is used. He's infested. They could blink stun here. So Tokyo, yes, that's indeed what they're going to do. A double impale to follow. Skeeter GG. will be next as GGs are called. And Bed Boom absolutely crushed. Game one. And keep in mind, this was an interesting game specifically because it was looking terrible for Bed Boom, right? Remember,